right, so let's continue on. Let's go on to our study on waves. So previously, we were looking at the fundamentals of waves. Okay, and uh, we learned things like the word wavelength. Okay, things like the word frequency of the waves, period of the waves. Okay, wave speed or wave velocity. Okay, so all these words become very important uh, uh, when we talk about uh, when we talk about the other uh, the other subtopics lah. okay then also we talked about damping okay and resonance okay damping is the amplitude decreases and resonance uh, the amplitude is maximum sorry uh, another word that we used is the word amplitude okay the maximum displacement from the equilibrium so the next partner of this chapter is going to talk about four phenomena. Okay, there are four wave phenomena. Phenomena is a natural event. It's a natural kejadian semula jadilah. Okay, it's a natural event that can be explained scientifically. Okay, so waves, uh, waves can, what waves can, uh, what, sorry, there are four phenomena, okay, that can happen to waves. And the first phenomena is what we call the reflection phenomena. Okay, so in this subtopic, we're going to be talking about the reflection of waves. Okay, so, and we see this uh, almost every day. Okay, we see this almost every day when we go to the beach. Okay, we see the water, you know, being reflected back after it hits the wall. Okay, things like ultrasound. Okay, it's an application of reflection of waves. Things like echo, okay, or um, there's this word for it, ultra, something like censoring, okay, sound censoring, like bats. Bats are naturally blind, but you wonder how they are able to fly around uh, without banging themselves into the walls. It's because they have, uh, they apply, okay, the, the, the phenomena of the reflection of waves <coughs> uh, in order to, uh, for them to navigate around uh, objects. Okay, so this is the first phenomena we're going to talk about. Get used to the word phenomena. All right, so let's talk about the reflection of waves. Let's take a look at this video. What can you see at the surface of the water? The surface of the water shows the reflection of the moon. What happens to waves when they are reflected? When you let out a shout in a canyon, what do you hear? Echoes can be heard. How are echoes produced? Okay, so that's a, like a in introduction. We see the reflection of the moon on the surface of a water or any object on the lake okay, because of the reflection. Okay, we always talk about reflection. Like, you know, when we see the mirror and we sing the song reflection as if we are Mulan. Okay, and then after that, of course, another kind of reflection is uh, this one, uh, sound reflection. When you are in a cave, dalam satu gua, or when you are, you know, against the two walls over here, and you shout, you will be able to hear your own sound. Okay, so that is also another application of reflection. You throw out the sound waves or you shout out the sound waves and the sound waves get reflected back to you. And that's why you can hear it. All right, let's take a look at this one. Trickly surface will catch the first wave and then transition, catch the original incoming wave and ride that back to shore. But a lot of them just kept getting wiped out by the double peak. Okay, so this is another uh, wave reflection now, but in this case, it is water waves. So the first one, the reflection of the moon on the lake, now, is the reflection of light waves. Okay, same like when you see your face in the mirror, it's also a reflection of light waves because you're seeing it secondly is the reflection of sound waves okay when we are listening to an echo okay uh, and then the third one in this example is the reflection of water waves when water hits a wall uh, it's going to be reflected back okay of course some of it is going to spill over that one i'm not saying i'm not saying that everything is reflected back now okay but i'm saying that there's reflection happening okay and that is the phenomena that we want to study today lah. 
Okay, so what will happen to the seawater as it hits the stone? Okay, we find that reflection of waves occurs when an incident wave. Uh, okay, so I want to start off by saying this word. This is incident, uh, NT. Okay. So incident wave. Uh, and we are going to see this word a lot. Uh, okay. So an incident wave, okay, is a wave before the phenomena happens. Okay, so it will be incident wave. Okay, and then after reflection, uh, it doesn't become incident wave, really. it becomes another wave. Lah. But since we're talking about reflection, it is a reflected wave. Okay, so the reflection of waves occurs when an incident wave okay, strikes a hard surface and is reflected. The surface acts as a reflector. Okay, this one is very logical. Lah. Okay, when light shines on the mirror, the mirror, the light will reflect back to you. When your sound travels towards the canyon, uh, the sound travels back to you. The canyon is a hard canyon, okay, or the wall of the hill or whatever is a hard surface. So the sound will be reflected back to you. Okay, when the water hits the wall, uh, when the waves, water waves hit the wall, uh, the wall is a hard surface. So the wall will help to reflect back the waves. Okay, so before the phenomena happens, it is called an incident wave. Okay, uh, dalam, uh, dalam bahasa Melayu, uh, incident is gelombang tuju lah. Okay, tuju as in menuju ke, menuju puncak lah. Okay, <laughs> wow. Okay, so incident wave is an incident that is before the phenomena happens. And after the phenomena, okay, in, because the phenomena is called reflection, so we call it the reflected wave. In this chapter, uh, we're going to learn four phenomena. Okay, and so different phenomena, the name of the wave is just going to, is just going to show the, what is the phenomena that happened. Uh. But whatever it is, before the phenomena happens, the wave is called an incident wave. Okay, so uh, get used to these words. All these new terminologies, uh, okay, uh, are good for us to know uh, because you know these are standard. Uh, words that we use. All right. Now, before we talk about incident wave, let's talk about the wave front first. Okay, so what is a wave front? Uh? A wave front is a line that joins all of the points in the same phase. So let's consider this wave. Uh? These four points here are in the same phase. So if we draw a line across there, uh, over here, okay, we can see that it makes a wave front. Okay, in a circular wave, these four points, A, B, C, D, are in the same phase. Means they are moving together. E, F, G, H is another one in the same phase. Okay, same phase means they are, you know, they are moving together like that. Lah. Okay, different phase means one go up, one come down, one go up, one come down. Very different. Okay, so two points have the same phase if both the points have the same displacement and moving in the same direction. Two most important things, okay? They are in the same phase if they have the same amplitude and they are moving in the same direction. Okay, if all of them are moving out, then yes. If this wave is going in and then this wave is coming out, uh, sorry, if this point B is going in and this point D is coming out this way, then they are not in phase because they are moving in different directions. Okay, so in this case, points A, B, C, D are points in the same phase because they have the same displacement and in the same direction. Okay, the line connecting A, B, C, D, this line, okay, is what we call a wave front. Dalam bahasa Melayu, dia adalah muka gelombang. Okay, I'm just giving the correct name for the things that we have already been drawing before. When we draw the waves, okay, when we draw the waves like this, Okay, these are all what we call wave fronts. Okay, so for a wave like this, uh, if we look from the top, kalau kita tengok dari atas bahkan, the wave front looks like straight lines. Right? color in this one, if we put our eyes over here, the wave front is going to look like circles. Okay, of course the wave is going out. Lah. Okay, so the lines that we see uh, on the wave, let's say you drop a stone into the water and you see those lines, right? Those lines, okay, are what we call wave fronts. 
Okay, so yeah, so these are all wavefront, wavefront, wavefront. Actually, the the crest uh, here, if we if there is a line that we can see here, is also known as a wavefront. So what can you say about the direction of the propagation of waves and the wavefront? The direction of the propagation of waves is perpendicular, okay, to the wavefronts. Oh no, hold on. Okay, the direction of propagation of waves is perpendicular to the wave fronts. Wave fronts is, you know, that way, and then the direction is this way. So, you know, it's perpendicular. So, the direction of propagation of circular waves is radially outwards, okay, which is perpendicular to the wave fronts. One of you asked me the other day, uh, how come uh, if we drop a stone in the middle, uh, the wave moves outwards? Uh, okay. So, uh, and I thought that was a very interesting question because I never thought about it before. I always thought that it's very natural, kan? When we drop a stone in here, kan, the wave will move, the wave that is produced, the wave front, uh, will move outwards. Lah. Okay, then I thought, oh yeah, lah, actually, uh, if you think about it, if you drop a stone, uh, shouldn't the water follow, lah, you know, the water wave should follow the stone going inside. Okay, but the explanation behind that is, uh, is that it's because the energy is being transferred outwards. Okay, so it cannot be following inside because the energy is transferred outwards. Okay, that's why the direction of propagation uh, for the circular waves is always outwards. Okay, from the source point. Uh. Alright, so again, uh, these are water waves. Uh, sorry, these are plane waves. Straight lines, straight lines, straight lines. You will see uh, that they are bright Okay, and dark lines. Okay, and I will talk about these bright lights and dark lines uh, in a little while. Lah. Okay, but what is most important is that the plane waves are straight lines and the direction of propagation is this way. Circular waves, also you see the same thing. Bright lights and dark, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Makan. Okay, but again, when the water wave, wave is moving outwards this way, okay, we say that the wavefront is perpendicular to the direction of the water waves, uh, the propagation of waves. <clears throat> okay, so uh, if you take a look at this, okay, this shows us the Lusana, okay, all moving outwards at this. Okay, so the question is, uh, uh, the question is, why do we have these bright regions and these dark regions? Okay, I will explain this in a little while. Huh? So the direction of propagation for the wave by using the arrow, Okay, it's always perpendicular to the wave front. So for a wave for a plane wave front, okay, plane, uh, okay, it will be this way. Or if you draw to the left, also doesn't matter. Lah. Okay, as long as it is perpendicular. Okay. For the circular wave front, okay, it is always radially outwards. Okay, so the wavelength is equal to the distance between two consecutive wave fronts. If we look at it from the original, the displacement distance graph, one, like, like this one, right? Okay, so this is the two crest, Makan. Now, if I draw it in three-dimensional, uh, wow. <laughs> okay, so this is the wave front. Okay, the joining the two crests. Uh. So this is the wave front. Okay, so the wavelength is equals to the distance between the two wave fronts. Okay, we know them as the distance between two crests or the distance between two troughs. Okay, but this is another one. If you have an entire wave on, you want to know that the wavelength is the distance between the two wave fronts. Okay, so in this example, this will be the wavelength. Okay, one bright to one bright is the wavelength. In this one, it is this one. Okay, this is the wavelength. One bright to another bright. That is the wavelength. And generally, you find uh, that the wavelength is always the same uh, unless you do something that changes it. Uh. Okay, look at this. Look at these two. Okay, these two lengths are about the same. Okay, so when you see the picture, I hope that you know, okay, okay, how to determine the wavelength. Okay, from the picture. Now we come to the question now uh, about why is it now uh, that there is bright and dark? Okay, how come a bright dark, bright dark, bright dark one? Okay, you have to assume that there's a light shining on the wave. Lah. Okay, so when we see 
So when we see the wave uh, on a piece of paper, okay, we're going to see this bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Okay, and this is the explanation why. When light rays move through the water in a ripple tank, alternate bright and dark fringes can be seen on the screen. Bright, dark, bright, dark. Okay, so how does these bright fringes appear? Okay, now, if you take a look at this, uh, the shape of this crest, okay, looks like a convex lens. Okay, in, um, when you were doing Form 3, uh, you learned that there are two kinds of lenses. Okay, one is a convex lens and the other one is a concave lens. Okay, take a look at this shape of the convex lens over here. Okay, let's say the light is moving over here. Okay, doesn't it look like this shape as the light is coming over here? Okay, and so because it acts like a convex lens, okay, at the crest, uh, okay, at the high points, the lights will all converge. Okay, mereka akan tertumpu to form the bright light. So you imagine, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, these five light rays uh, will all meet at the same place, roughly about the same place, okay, to form that bright light. And so that's why you have the dark, the dark areas. Uh, look at this dark area. It's very tebal. Berbanding dengan the bright area, which is like this. Lah. Okay, so converge. The, the, the lights uh, are converging at the crests. Okay, because the crests look like convex lens. Okay, like this. Okay, if you remember in Form 3, uh, when you learn uh, this one, the convex lens, when the light comes over here, okay, it's going to meet at one point. Okay, it's going to, we call this word converge. Lah. Okay, converge means they akan tertumpu kepada satu tempat. So the shape of the trough, okay, acts like a concave lens. Okay, concave lens is like this. Take a look at this part. So for concave lens, uh, okay, when the light passes through the concave lens, okay, what is going to happen is that it's going to diverge. Okay, they are going to tersebar luas. And that's why uh, you have the dark fringes and uh, the dark areas in the plane waves, this one, the dark areas, are always going to be thicker than the bright areas. And that's why when we calculate the wavelength, uh, when we determine the wavelength, we use the bright areas because the bright areas are much more narrower. Okay, dark area, we don't know which is the center. Okay, not so good. Lah. So for this one, uh, we use bright area. Okay, for, so every line that you see here, okay, this is bright. Okay, and this whole section over here is dark. Okay, bright means crest and dark means trough. Okay, bahagian bawah uh, of the wave. Okay, and so that's why when we calculate the wavelength, uh, we just take from bright to bright. Okay, from crest to crest. Okay, for a wave front. Lah. Okay, so crest converges, the trough, okay, the light will diverge. Okay, actually, it will diverge even more lah, okay, to form the dark line. Okay, so the reason why we're talking about this lah, and we kind of strayed away from reflection now is because I want you to understand number one, what is wave front, and number two, why is there light, dark, light, dark, light, dark? And why is it that the light now? is very nipis, okay, and the dark is very tebal. Okay, does it mean that the wave uh, is not, not, if light is so nipis, right, means like this, like this, like this, and then here very big, <laughs> like that. Okay, actually that's not true, lah. this is not the wave. If the, if the, the crest uh, is represented by the light part, you mean the light part very nipis, and then the dark part very tebal, lah. no lah, okay, it's, this is not how the wave looks like. The wave looks like a very normal wave, it's just that, at the crest, the light converges. That's why we have a very, very uh, thin. Okay, we have a very thin, bright fringe, whereas the dark fringe is very tebal because you know the light is divergent. Lah. Okay, this will kind of diverge. And we are always going to see this. Okay, we are always going to see this. Um, hopefully, hopefully, lah, okay, hopefully we can go back to school so that we can take a look at this. Lah. All right, <clears throat> now let's talk about reflection again. Okay. The law of reflection uh, states that the incident angle is always equal to the reflected angle. 
Okay, so the incident angle uh, is the angle that forms, okay, from the incident wave, okay, to a line in the center, which we call a normal line. Okay, so this is the incident angle. Okay, the, the line between, sorry, the angle between the incident wave and the normal line. The reflected angle, the angle of reflection, is the angle between the normal line and the line that is making the reflected waves. Okay, so if you look at this, uh, this is the incident wave front. Okay, this is the wave front. So bright, 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 bright. bright. So the wave is traveling this way. And it's going to be reflected this way. Okay, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Okay, and the law of reflection says uh, that the angle of incidence, okay, always equals to the angle of reflection. It's the easiest law in the world. Okay, how, whichever angle, uh, no matter how you do, uh, the reflected angle will always have the same angle as the angle of incidence. Okay, so the incident wave is a wave before it strikes the obstacle. Okay, as I said before. Lah. All right, the reflected waves is a wave that has undergone a change in direction of propagation after reflection. Notice uh, that originally the waves is like this. But after reflection, the direction of propagation changes. This is probably, you know, the very, very important word. Okay the direction of the wave uh, has already changed direction. That's why it's called reflection. Uh. If after reflection, it still continues to go on, uh, that's not called reflection, that's called nonsense. <laughs> okay, after it reflects, okay, after it hits, it must reflect. Okay, so incident wave, reflected wave. Incident wave, reflected wave. Okay, so before reflection, is called incident. Before any phenomena, uh, actually for that matter, it's called uh, incident wave. After the reflection, it's called a reflected wave. Okay, I is the angle of incidence, which is the angle between the incident wave and the normal line. So this, this, um, this dotted line over here that you see, okay, is called a normal line. Now, one thing to note now, okay, is that, uh, and if you have this in your notes, uh, please write this. Lah. Okay, normal line is perpendicular perpendicular okay or 90 degrees huh, to the reflector always okay no matter how your reflector is like if your reflector is saying it like this okay the normal line is always a 90 degrees to the reflector okay if my reflector is like this okay this is my reflector my normal line will always be like this. Okay, always 90 degrees. So you always start by the, the normal line. Okay, and then the law of reflection. Uh, the law of reflection tells us that the incident angle, okay, I, okay, is always equals to the reflected angle. Okay, reflected angle. Here, I. Okay, so you have the waves. I mean, if you the, the blue line is just you know basically just following the wave front. Okay, so sorry. Okay, so this is the wave front. Okay, after it reflects, okay, the wave will go this way. Okay, so we know that these two angles must be the same. Okay, so R is the angle of reflection and the ang which is the angle between the reflected waves and the normal line. Okay? All right. Now, in the lab, uh, in the lab, we have this thing, uh, okay? We have this thing, okay, that is called a ripple tank, which is why I say, uh, I hope that if it is your turn to get vaccinated, go and get vaccinated as soon as possible. For those of you who are vaccinated and you're still coming for class today, thank you very much for coming for class. I think you should be resting, but okay especially those who got vaccinated on Saturday and Sunday. Lah. If you got vaccinated on the 16th, I don't even bother. Okay. <laughs> and especially if you're, you're, what, you're Sinovac. Lah. If you're Sinovac, don't even need to ask for rest. Lah. Okay. If you're taking Pfizer, probably. Okay. You will need one day rest. 
Okay, so anyway, in our in our lab, uh, there's this alert called the ripple tank. Uh. Okay, so this is ripple tank, okay, which is like this place. Okay, this place where we put water. Uh. Okay, and on this water, uh, we put this motor over here that is connected to a spherical dipper. A spherical dipper is like a ball. Okay, it's like a ball. Uh, and because we connect it to a motor, uh, what's going to happen is the ball is going to move up and down. Uh. Okay, the ball is going to move up and down and it's going to touch the water and it's going to create the water waves. Okay, and so after that, when we and because there's a lamp above here, okay, so the lamp is going to shine the light on the wave. Okay, and if you remember just now, okay, if the lamp shines on the crest, it's going to converge. If the lamp shines on the trough, it's going to diverge. So you're gonna get bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Okay, and then we're gonna see uh, on the stroboscope lah. Okay, there's this alert called the stroboscope. Today I'm just gonna mention it, but we will look at it more if ever. Okay, we go back to school. Okay, I want to talk about this. I want to. I definitely need to do this experiment with you all so that you can see how the wave fronts look like and the stroboscope and everything. Okay, but. Uh, let's take a look at this video first. Oh, no, sorry. Okay. So this is from the top view. Huh? Okay, what I want you to notice is... Oh. Sorry, hold on. Okay, what I want you to notice huh, is that every wave... Okay, look at... Look at every wave that is coming here, right? Once it hits the wall it's going to be reflected back. Okay, see how it is reflected back? It's reflected back this way. Okay, so these are all the reflected. It's going to go this way. The incident wave, <laughs> okay, the incident wave is this way. The reflected wave is this way. Okay, and it always follows the law of reflection. The law of reflection says, the angle of incidence equals to <laughs> the angle of reflection. Okay, so if I draw a normal line here, okay, if I draw a normal line here, remember normal line is always 90 degrees to the reflector, right? You see that this wave, oh, sorry, not this wave. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, sorry, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me draw it again. Okay, let's say I have this wave, uh, no. Oh, I cannot see. La. Hold on, hold on. Uh. I think it's a little bit difficult to see on this. Wait, 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 let me... Okay, never mind. Let me finish this first. La. Okay. So whatever it is, when it hits, it's going to reflect back. Okay, it's going to reflect be following the law of reflection, which is the law, the angle of incidence equals to the angle of reflection. So how do we draw the diagram to show the reflection of waves? Okay, so first of all, you have the incident angle and the reflected angle R. Lah. Okay, later. Huh? So when you draw this, if the wave is coming this way and there is no angle because it is the same as the normal line. Okay, and since there is no angle, sorry, since there is no angle to this reflection, kan? okay, what is going to happen is, is that it's going to be reflected back. It isn't very normal. Lah. Okay, I go to you, you come back to me. No angle at all. Okay, But if I tilt the reflector, okay, if I tilt the reflector, first thing we need to do is we need to draw the normal line. Okay, we draw the normal line, then we measure the angle over here. And so when we draw the reflected waves, Okay, sorry, <laughs> so in this case, when we draw the reflected waves, okay, it's going to look like this. These red lines over here. Please ignore my dog. Okay. <laughs> All right. So angle of incidence over here. The oh, sorry. You know what? I am going to. Okay. So the normal line is drawn over here. So you find the angle of incidence. And the angle of reflection is the same value. Okay? So, <laughs> I know. 
So the first thing that we need to notice uh, is that before and after reflection, uh, okay, before and after reflection, the wavelength is the same. The wavelength doesn't change. The only thing that changes okay, is the, the direction of propagation of waves. Very important thing. Okay? The frequency doesn't change, the wavelength doesn't change, the wave speed doesn't change, nothing except for the direction changes. Okay, make a note over here. Lah. Okay, after reflection, okay, only the direction is changed. Because I'm going to ask you to compare with the other phenomena. Okay, different different phenomena, different different things change. Huh? But reflection by so far is the easiest lah. Because after reflection, the wavelength remains the, speed, the same, speed remains the same, the frequency is the same, only the direction changes. Okay? So, that's, uh, see over here, the wave speed also remains the same. Okay, the speed of the wave doesn't change. And therefore, the frequency also doesn't change. So, let's compare the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. According to the law of reflection, the angle of incidence must be equal to the angle of reflection. When the water waves with a wavelength of lambda okay, moves towards a straight reflector, what is the wavelength of the reflected waves? It will also be lambda. Okay, So when we compare between the incident wave and the reflected waves, okay, this is what we're going to get. We're going to have an unchanged speed. We're going to have an unchanged wavelength. We're going to have an unchanged frequency. And only the direction is changed. Very, very important thing. Okay, Everything remains the same except for the direction. Okay, Of course, okay, I need to say this now. Of course, in reality, yeah, <laughs> in reality, some of the speed is going to be lost. Lah. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that this is a perfect example. Lah. Okay, for example, the reflector is 100% smooth, lah, you know, and it will reflect 100%. Lah. But in reality, you know, brick wall, lah, there's always a little bit of friction. Lah. Of course, there's going to be some loss. But for our discussion purposes, let's just talk as if everything is unchanged. The only thing that changes is the direction of the propagation of waves. So what I would like you to do today, okay, is this, lah. I would like you to draw a diagram, okay, to show the reflection of a plane wave by a plane reflector. This is very easily done, okay. I'm going to send you the instructions, lah, okay. I'm going to send you the instructions. Uh, I'm going to end the class now, uh, okay, but I'm going to send you the instructions, okay, uh, on how to draw uh, the diagram uh, of the to show the reflection of the plane wave by a plane reflector. What you're going to need is this. You're going to need a ruler. I want you to do it on an A4 paper. Okay, do it now. Okay, do it now and hand it in into the Telegram channel now. Okay, because you have 15 minutes. This will only take you less than 15 minutes to do this. Okay, prepare a piece of A4 paper. Okay, prepare, of course, your ruler, uh, ruler and pen and everything and go and get a protractor. Okay, you know what's a protractor? The one in the 180 degrees one, uh, this one. <laughs> Okay, uh, go and prepare a protector because you need to set the angle of incidence and make sure it's the same as the angle of reflection. I'm going to send you the slides uh, uh, in the group that have the instructions. All I need you to do is to follow the instructions, draw the reflection process okay, on the piece of A4 paper, snap the photo of the A4 paper and send it into the Telegram channel by 9.30. This is very, very easily done. Okay, by 9.30, Please complete this. Okay, and then we will end our class for today. We will continue on Wednesday.